Ukraine using U.S. made long range missiles within Russia for the very first time. Uh, you were prepared to come on and say you think defense, it might be under some pressure, defense stocks, I should say. Um, does today's news, does that change your opinion on that? I mean, not really. Over the long term, just because we have a Trump presidency uh, doesn't necessarily, of course, mean that the world's going to become less dangerous. But I think it favors certain defense stocks over others. When you think of what Palantir has been doing the past year, I think they're going to be a favored defense stock compared to what we've seen historically from the traditional powers. If you're looking at Lockheed Martin, they're probably more at a risk of Elon Musk and Vivek doing their Department of Governmental Efficiency and their no-bid contracts that Lockheed Martin wins all the time. I think they're a bit more in danger than a Palantir would be, which is the new face of defense here in the U.S. All right. Um, Palantir obviously had a very tough day yesterday. Yes, they did. <laughs> um, with this thesis in mind, I know you said you thought some of the traditional names, just to be clear, that's Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and Northrop Grumman. You thought they'd be under some pressure. It seems like you still do. Yeah. And there's more trouble ahead for them, potentially. Uh, after that big sell-off when it came to Palantir yesterday, is this a buy-the-dip opportunity in your mind? I think so. I mean, from a long-term perspective, Palantir is a very compelling company. I mean, they are doing some unique things. I think they are able to be more nimble than the big majors have been in the past. And more importantly, they're going to have some important defenders and advocates for their business in this new administration. All right. Uh, moving on to some of the other things that we're focused on today, uh, some Google news. Google under some pressure on the pre-market as well before this breaking news, just to be clear, um, on the idea that it might be forced to divest some of its Chrome browser. Um, you're a Google investor. It's one of the top holdings for your firm as well. Yeah. How do you view this news and just the narrative when it comes to Google overall? Yeah, I'm a little surprised that they are trying to do a full court press going into January 20th when they all get booted out. Lena Khan's getting out, Jonathan Cantor at the Department of Justice. I think there's going to be a huge change. And so if you're Google or the other companies that they're targeting, they said Microsoft, HP, you have to run out the clock. So from a long-term perspective, I don't view that the U.S. has juice here in the antitrust suit against uh, Google. They'll still have to fight the EU off that that one never goes away. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. You're specifying U.S. versus the EU. So yeah. in your mind, you don't see any real business risk. But what about just the potential for fines and things like that and the impact on earnings, revenue, uh, the idea that they might have to make some changes in Europe? Does that change just your view on the valuation or the idea of the EPS that this company can generate? Um, a little bit. But I, I worry less about Europe simply because I think they're pushing too far. So when the European regulators said, hey, we want to break up Google. There's no way they're going to be able to get that through. That's an impossible task. So if they set their target at that, they'll have to back down into fines and things like that. For Google, that's typically a rounding error. I mean, at the end of the day, they may have to change some of their tax treatment, but that's not going to change the fundamentals of their business. All right. Alphabet shares. We always call it Google, Al but it's really yeah. Alphabet. Um, those shares down, uh, you know, just over a half a percent right now. Important to note that the shares were down before the breaking news. I just want to remind the audience right now we are following breaking news yeah. Ukraine using long-range missiles, U.S.-made long-range missiles within Russia for the very first time. And we've seen futures turn to the red um, following that news. I want to go to one more thing that you wanted to talk to us about today. It's part of the quote-unquote Trump trade. At least we say it is, yeah. uh, the small caps. Um, you're saying that you, you're a small cap investor. You believe in the small cap narrative. We've had a lot of people come on talking about small caps. Yeah. And we haven't really seen them rally the way that yeah. we've expected, to, expected them to just yet. You say there's two different ways to play small caps, the IWM ETF, uh, people like Tom Lee, very bullish on that, yeah. and also the IJR ETF. So, like, right now we're looking at the chart right here. Um, what's the difference between the IJR and the IWM? We're seeing the difference in performance right now. And, again, it's very important yeah. to note that, again, everything has taken a turn to, the, the, you know, the downside following this news. Yeah, so there's kind of a tale of two cities in small caps. You have those who actually make money and those who don't, right, where it's a long-term growth play. Think of technology stocks that aren't profitable but are included in the small cap, specifically the IWM. The IJR has a more customized type of companies that they're working with, fewer, typically stronger earnings. And so our view of small caps comes from the fact that they just survived a really tough time over the past couple of years. You look at, for one example of a stock, look at SoFi. SoFi really took a beating in 2022. And ever since then, they bottomed out, and now they're on their way back up. That's also, for example, a stock that could benefit from additional Trump trade of financial services, which you're looking at a lot of people getting excited about what the Trump administration is going to do for financial services, for banks. Mm -hmm. That's an example of a company that could be up and coming. But from an index at large, 
I think the IJR is a better play. It also okay. admittedly has a lower price uh, expense ratio than uh, the IWM right. as well. Uh, Jeff, before we let you go, I want to come full circle. Uh, how do you see the rest of it today playing out? Again, just for the people joining us just yeah. now, uh, Ukraine using U.S.-made long-range missiles within Russia for the first time. Also, Russian President Vladimir Putin saying that the threshold for the use of nuclear weapons has now changed based on uh, if any country uh, with nuclear power attacks Russia, basically saying that changes the threshold for the use of nuclear weapons. How do you see the, the market day playing out with this news? Volatile. I mean, without question, it's going to be volatile in the markets. But I, I don't think it's just a today thing. Between now and end of year, expect volatility every time we have something in the geopolitical issue because Israel is still raging, you know, with uh, what's going on with Hamas. There's a lot of news coming, but also every time Trump makes a cabinet pick, expect volatility as well, depending on who that person is. So okay. that's the name of the game through end of year.